She pulled him up the slope, scrambling until they reached the top of the ridge. Are you okay? He asked, panting. I didn't mean to. I'm great. She smiled broadly at him, then peered down at the smoke. A single campfire burned near the center of town, where the night watch gathered to warm up every hour or so. Come on. Suddenly it seemed important to get there fast, before certainty faded, before the warm feeling inside her could give way to doubt. She scrambled down between the painted stones of the hoverboard path, David struggling to keep up. When her feet reached level ground, she ran, heedless of the dark and the silent huts on either side, seeing only the firelight ahead. Her speed was effortless, like hoverboarding on an open straightaway. Tally ran until she reached the fire, skidding to a halt against its cushion of heat and smoke. She reached up to unclasp the pendant's chain. Tally? David ran up panting, confusion on his face. He tried to breathlessly say more. No, she said. Just watch. The pendant swung by its chain in her fist, sparkling red in the firelight. Tally focused all her doubts on it, all her fear of discovery, her terror at Dr. Cable's threats. She clutched the pendant, squeezing the unyielding metal until her muscles ached, as if forcing into her own mind the almost unthinkable fact that she might really remain an ugly for life, but somehow not ugly at all. She opened her hand and threw the necklace into the center of the fire. It landed on a crackling log, the metal heart burning black for a moment, then gradually turning yellow and white in the heat. Finally, a small pop came from it as if something trapped inside had exploded, and it slipped from the log and disappeared among the flames. She turned to David, her vision spotted with sinuous shapes from staring into the fire. He coughed at the smoke. Wow, that was dramatic. Tally suddenly felt foolish. Yeah, I guess so. He moved closer. You really meant that. Whoever gave it to you doesn't matter anymore. What if they come? No one's coming. I'm sure of it. David smiled and gathered Tally into a hug, pulling her away from the edge of the fire. Well, Tally Youngblood, you certainly know how to make a point. You know, I would have believed you if you just told me. No, I had to do it like this. I had to burn it, to know for sure. He kissed her forehead and laughed. You're beautiful. When you say that, I almost... She whispered. Suddenly, a wave of exhaustion struck Tally, as if her last bit of energy had gone into the fire with the pendant. She was tired from the wild run here, from the long night with Maddie and Az, from a hard day's work. And tomorrow, she would have to face Shay again and explain what had happened between her and David. Of course, the moment Shay saw the pendant was gone from around Tally's neck, she would know. But at least she'd never know the real truth. The pendant was charred beyond recognition, its true purpose hidden forever. Tally slumped into David's arms, closing her eyes. The image of the glowing heart was burned into her vision. She was free. Dr. Cable would never come here now, and no one could ever take her away from David or the smoke or do to Tally's brain whatever the operation did to Pretty's. She was no longer an infiltrator. She finally belonged here. Tally found herself crying. David silently walked her to the bunkhouse. At the door, he leaned in to kiss her, but she pulled away and shook her head. Shay was just inside. Tally would have to talk to her tomorrow. It wouldn't be easy, but Tally knew she could face anything now. David nodded, kissed his finger, and traced one of the remaining scratches on her cheek. See you tomorrow, he whispered. Where are you going? For a walk. I need to think. Don't you ever sleep? Not tonight, he smiled. Tally kissed his hand and slipped inside, where she kicked off her shoes and crawled into bed with her clothes on, falling asleep in seconds, as if the weight of the world had lifted from her shoulders. The next morning she awoke to chaos, the sounds of running, shouting, and the scream of machines invading her dreams. Out the bunkhouse window, the sky was full of hover cars. Special circumstances had arrived. <laughs>